Uh, next up is Relay Technology with uh, David Greenwald. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thanks, Dave, for setting this up, and thanks, everyone, for coming. My name is Dave Greenwald. I'm, I'm one of the founders from Relay Technology Management. And what Relay is is a software analytics company that harnesses machine learning and natural language processing to identify and evaluate scientific innovation. So I know that's a mouthful. It's probably all the buzzwords I can fit into one sentence. So <laughs> now let me expand. Uh, there's an, there's a really a tremendous amount of scientific literature and patents and information that goes pouring through the internet every day. Um, so as things are discovered in academic labs or in small companies or even large companies, they often get published in scientific journals or um, you know or patented or appeared in conferences. So what Relay has done. Um, is basically built a software product which aggregates all of this information and then can use sophisticated machine learning algorithms to actually rank what is relevant and important for particular um, technology user needs. So our primary customers are actually business development and licensing professionals at um, companies in the biopharma space. Um, so we've built this out for several different verticals. Our first vertical is the life science Second vertical is medical device, third is chemical, and fourth is physical sciences and energy. Um, so I'll show you really briefly what we're talking about here. Um, and within each segment, we basically have users in academia, in business development at these companies, and then also uh, investment professionals like hedge funds um, and investment banks. So the way that this would work for an, a licensing professional at a pharma company, so let's say I'm at Novartis and I'm looking for the next best cardio cardiovascular drug. Um, what you would do is you would enter in, therapeutic category would be cardiovascular, indication might be congestive heart failure, most advanced phase, so this is, um, you know, is it in clinical trials, is, has it been approved, large molecule, yes or no, secondary indications, so does it also have activity in, in cancer, for instance, and then anything you want to exclude. And then down here we have our saved searches, so you can basically share these results within groups, set up SMS and uh, text messaging alerts um, for when new patents come out or when new clinical trials are, are published. And then down here what you can basically do are, are load results uh, from a previous search or you can refresh the results and see what's changed since the last time you did a search. So as an example, we did a search for, for pain, um, which is actually a very large field, and um, in phase one clinical trials. And this is basically what comes back. It's a results page where you can see quickly the name of the company, the name of the compound, which mechanism it works on. So this is kind of getting into the science of it. Um, the term of protection on the most relevant patent. So I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with uh, drug development, but as soon as you file a patent, the clock starts ticking. So you want to license something that has a long patent life remaining. Key publications, so is this published in Science and Nature, or is this published in you know, the obscure journal of Lithuanian geology? Uh, what phase of development it's in, and then what indication it is. On the far left is the relay score, and this is where the machine learning comes into play. So what we can do is look at various aspects of both the science and the market, and say how strong is this compared to other drugs in the pain market? and then assign it a score which basically relates to is this something that is highly valued or lower valued. On the bottom we have a macro trend te technology dashboard so we did a search for pain. You can quickly pull up um, stats on how many clinical trials there are for pain, how many phase one licensing deals have been done in the last several years, when something is licensed, at what phase of development is it licensed at, who are some of the top deal making companies again for phase one and pain, Roots of administration, so this is um, obviously most pain drugs are given orally. Which companies have the most clinical trials in phase one for pain? And then this one, which is pipeline by mechanism. So this is where we start to get into looking at different mechanisms that drugs act on and see where the gaps are for ident basically identifying areas of innovation. And then lastly, what I'll do is kind of zero in. So for each compound, we've actually created profiles. And what it does is it has a little bit, it's a report that you can basically print out and compare side by side. So if I'm at Novartis and I'm deciding between several um, drugs to in license, I can basically print these out and see, you know, how, what's the term protection on the patents, um, which journals has it been published in, which uh, researchers have worked on this, where, where have they worked, um, and then what are the clinical trial results. 
So, you know, it, it goes beyond just data aggregation and really provides a competitive intelligence tool for biz dev and pharma. And this is something, um, again, this is our first vertical, um, but there's a tremendous need here um, for something that, you know, can really help uh, speed this process. So, you know, our goal at Relay is to be able to provide this information to these companies so they can make better decisions and help bring better, pa better drugs to more patients faster. Um, so that's sort of our, our mission statement. Um, but with that, I'll end about a second early and thank everyone again for coming. Happy to take questions. Um, I apologize if there's no biologists in the room. All right, Relay Technology, any questions? Um, not sure if I missed this at the beginning, but uh, how are you getting all the data into the system? Are you scraping it or? Yeah, great question. So we've actually set up automatic feeds from a number of public and private sources. So a lot of this information comes from places like PubMed, clinicaltrials.gov, the FDA website, um, et cetera. And then we also have a number of private sources as well. So when we compare uh, things using machine learning, we can basically look at market dynamics and say um, how many companies are in this space and you know, what are their valuations at. So we can basically overlay scientific and market data in real time. Do you allow your customer to actually help the system learn, you know, because they obviously know some something around the, uh, their domain so they can help the system? Of course. Um, yeah, absolutely. So the question was, um, are the clients able to actually interact with the system and can they make it better? And that's part of how we're actually designing the GUI is to really enable them some transparency into the algorithm. So they might say, you know, I know that you're ranking patents a certain way. I rank them. I have my own. Uh, ideas about that. So let's remove that from the ranking and see how that affects the list and how that affects the relay score. So there is some vis visibility to how that works. And I mean, I think this is really interesting getting, in, getting into um, how we design the GUI so that customers can actually interact with it and really make the most sense of that out of the information. Because at the end of the day, these are people who basically just have information overload. So we want to give them a tool where they can kind of get the graphs that they feel are most important right away. I guess um, machine learning traditionally has a fair amount of, I guess, uh, I don't know how to say faults with it, you know, a lot of false information and misguided, and it gets better over time, but when you're dealing with very large pharmaceutical deals, I can imagine there's a very small tolerance for error. I mean, how do you balance that, and is that sort of something that's built into the system so they see that fault? I mean, does that question make sense? No, it does. And the answer is that there's really about 50 years of scientific innovation, which we sort of use as positive examples. So we can go back and say, this drug was approved for this indication. Where was it published? And who was the researcher behind it? And what did the clinical trials look like? And what did that molecule look like? And was there toxicity? Was there you know, pharmacology problems? And we can sort of say, OK, if you have a benzene ring in this methyl group, you might have a problem with efficacy in phase two trials. So it's sort of, there's actually a wealth of data going back, you know, decades, um, and sort of we mine that data and are extrapolating it into the future. Now that being said, what that does is it does allow some predictive analysis, and we can get pretty close. Um, but obviously, at the end of the day, you know, there's still people who need to make these decisions, and they are large decisions. Um, but so it's it's kind of narrowing the field for where to look and maybe where to go. Yeah, exactly. It's actually it's a tool for diligence as well. Um, so. That's a good question. Yep. So you talked about this development uh, development. Um, can you talk about it? How do you envision it working for uh, the sales folks? Sure. So, um, so one of the challenges, again, is kind of creating something. Our vision is to have a application which is at their desktop every day. So think about a um, Google Finance or a Bloomberg homepage where every day you're gonna you're gonna want to know you know our company is really interested in diabetes so I want to see you know what researchers have published in the last day or two or what patents have been issued so the user interface is really something that they're gonna want to use every day to keep track of multiple things going on in this field um, and then when they want to do specific searches I mean it's, you know, it's right there at the yeah do you currently have customers and what's their feedback on your relay score yeah. So great question. The question was, do we already have customers? We do. 
Um, we've worked with um, Stromedics, which is a spin-out from Biogenidec, which is right down the street um, from here. And uh, their feedback was great. So the way they were doing this was they were kind of piecing it together by hand. It was taking about six months to do this, and then just kind of dumping it into a spreadsheet, and the data was incomplete. Um, so you know, very quickly, we were able to take search parameters from them, enter it in, give them a report. Not only did everything out there, but again, this ranking, which says, look, here are the top 10 or 15 that you should really concentrate on. And their feedback from it was great. Again, what they wanted was a little bit more transparency into why something is ranked higher than another. Um, so that's why we're focusing our efforts right now on doing it. Good question. All right, thank you, Relay Technologies.